understand the indigenization of their countries, their cities, their companies. Connecting all these capabilities from sensors to devices will completely transform the effectiveness of their business, their healthcare systems, their job creation. They understand the competition will be about how quickly you make this transition as a company or as a country. Also, as you talk to almost every major industry, whether it's the top retail companies, where I was with the very largest one in the world last week alone, they talk about how their future is about the intersection of digital and physical, and how they must completely transform their organization or they will get left behind. And you talk to healthcare systems, whether it's the doctors, whether it's the hospitals, whether it's the insurance companies up in Boston, they understand what this means to adding productivity for the first time ever to a healthcare system that must improve productivity or it's going to bankrupt the countries around the world. In short, what a difference one year makes. Last year at the Internet of Things Forum, it was just 800 of us, and each of us was kind of learning our way along. Fast forward to January at the Consumer Electronics Show. The chart that Doug just showed from Intel in terms of hype, it was the top topic at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. By the end of January, when you talk to government leaders at the World Economic Forum, they were talking about how their country could transform. President Park of South Korea about a creative economy, she understand how the Internet of Things could tie together to change process and job creation. President Pena of Mexico understood what it meant to a modern and prosperous Mexico. You begin to look at how quickly this is unfolding, and while I agree it's at the very top of topics today, I don't think it's anywhere near close to being at a peak. I think you're going to see this thing grow exponentially. The impact of the internet from the time of conception to today has probably been the most fundamental equalizer in life if you come out of the education. And yet, I believe firmly, and I have yet to have anybody really seriously disagree with any facts, the impact of what we're going to do together will be five to ten times the impact over the next decade compared to the internet from its start to today. And what enables that is how we bring this together as an organization. Because this isn't about one company or a couple companies. To be effective as you tie together all these sensors, all these devices, change business process, etc., it will be about how we as an ecosystem function. The IoT is a concept that when you made a decision to head your city this way, it wasn't a given that it would work. And yet you took the risk, you got a very good CIO, I think you ought to give her a raise by the way, and if she ever wants to change, I will hire her in a second. Not happening. <laughs> but uh, what I'm really talking about is you had the vision to say this was going to be more than connecting things, cars and education and healthcare and citizens and snow plows. What made you make that decision and, and how did you come about it? Well, I mean, John, I mean, I did work uh, in government, I mean, in the White House and stuff, but information is power. Mm -hmm. And part of what's hard for government is to adjust the idea that you want to give that information out, especially in the city of Chicago. Okay. So we have a lot of data. Yeah. How to make that data information, and then how to make that information commercialized. And unless you make that data public, mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to get the commercialization, let alone data go translated into information. That's one. Two, uh, I would also argue one of the things that uh, we're trying to do, and it came from a mistake. Uh, I was trying to speed up, but one I have a view. Uh, time online. I want to be able to measure time online to know if we're actually, if you can't measure something, you can't hold anybody accountable. So how long is a business in line for uh, getting an application or getting a license or getting a permit? And if I can't measure that, I can't know if we're making progress or falling behind. Mm -hmm. And we try to do something with technology for the building permits. If you're going to be a small business and buy the uh, space next door, how long does it get to get a permit? I kept telling them, look, I was a congressman. It took me six months to get the permit to do an addition and four months to build it. That's screwy. Now what happened was we did a great job for software for the architects, but the software we did did not communicate with zoning. Mm -hmm. And then this stuff started piling up. Now we figured out how to paper it over. I said, well, that's it. I've had it. We're going to create one office for the entire city of Chicago for information technology and coordination of that effort. And because I'm not going to a place where people are not looking at the city of Chicago from a silo perspective. And the other thing we're doing is the, uh, we have a small business center, one-stop shop, 
by 2016 it will be paperless. And now, you guys may not think that's cool, but trust me, if you're stuck in the 20th century, and I'm talking about the mid-20th century, like that's a big leap forward. Uh, and I want to make uh, the, so my main goal is, because if you're a small business, you're starting up, you're here with your customers. You don't really start dealing with City Hall until 9 o'clock at night. And I want you to be able to talk to the city uh, and interact with the city of your business when you want, not when we're, we want. Now, the biggest thing that I'm really excited about, mm -hmm. Our Chicago library system has 80 neighborhood libraries. It's bigger than Manhattan and Brooklyn's combined. We were just rated number one in the world, number three, number one in the United States, number three in the world, beating Beijing and Shanghai. Not that I'm competitive. <laughs> but I, gave, I brought a gentleman in from uh, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation on libraries mm -hmm. to run the library. I said, you turn the library into a 24-7 operation. I don't want it open to 6 o'clock in the evening and then shut down. We now have a system that if you have a library card, which is free, you can go online in English or Spanish and get tutoring in any subject from kindergarten to calculus. Free. And the reason I was adamant about that is, obviously if something my kids need help, I can provide that. If you're recently to this country, or if you don't have a college education as a parent, you try helping a kid with eighth grade algebra. And I want that online so our kids can excel. And now you can get free help. You want to write a paper on 1812, the War of 1812? Online chat from 11 o'clock in the afternoon morning to 11 o'clock at night, English or Spanish, any subject. And the library system now is literally partnering, not siloed, with our school system. So we know what the kids are working on in that area. Mm -hmm. And the library it has a teacher in the library and a system to help provide. So after school, there is a lot. A teacher, tutoring, we can go home, live chat on homework help. And I think it's the best thing we can do to keep moving our graduation rate and keep advancing our kids educationally.